Welcome everyone, Questine here with a discussion about Total War, Warhammer 3, Immortal Empires. And let's talk about Daniel, Yuri, the Demon Prince. I've named them Questini over here. Just a nickname some people give me in games when I play online. Because apparently people calling me Costin is a bit difficult. This is not a whining video about Daniel, this is making fun of Daniel video. Because there's a lot of things to make fun of. To understand how bad this particular faction is, let's say you take Nurgle territory, right? And you own the Warriors of Chaos DLC and you can recruit Marauders of Nurgle. Well, fun fact about Marauders of Nurgle. When you recruit them, they'll start at low HP. Even though you don't have the instant recruitment that Nurgle has, they will start, still start as, at low HP as they would for Nurgle, assuming you were to recruit with... Um, uh, when, with them from a Nurgle campaign. Yeah, certain mistakes were made with that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's part of the rework situation that it is an oversight. Creative Assembly doesn't really care about Daniel. It is the worst campaign in the game by far and the most ignored campaign in the game by far by Creative Assembly. Even though they gave him a new star position and he has a pretty easy time due to it, it's still not a great campaign. And anyway, let me go over a couple of things. First off, you can't even equip items on him, so things like Armors of Destiny, proper items that would give him a lot of power, don't work on him. Oh, but you can customize items. Again, it won't be the same level of power as having something like an Armor of Destiny and having some other items to equip on him. His skill line is a mess, to put it plainly, by the way. He doesn't even have like things like Deadly Onslaught or Heroic Killing Blow, so he's not even that great in melee, even with all the items, that, even with all the parts that you give him. I mean, granted, you can get some of those abilities, of course, through some of the, those items, but can you get all of them? And you do end up losing, ultimately, quite a bit compared to virtually every other Lord in the game, on both a casting level and a melee level. He's not really that great in combat. You can make his army pretty decent if you own DLC for much better factions so that you can get regiments run on from all of the Chaos factions. Um, there are other factions that can do that, by the way. You know, Archeon, Bellacor, Sigvold, Colic. They can get a lot of regiments right now. But no, we, got, we get to have Daniel. <laughs> what a joke of a legendary lord. Uh, the way you increase your hero capacity, it's not too bad, but you do have to get the structure that does it, uh, secondary structure, that can do it uh, for you. So you need to get this particular structure or the variant for whichever god you're going for. And you know, roster-wise, you have a pretty terrible situation with it, actually, because you do get all the demonic units, including things like Plague Ogres, Toad Dragons, and all that, though... Again, Undivided Chaos does also get that. You do get Changebringers, so if you want to have a flamethrower outside of a Siege faction, you can do so, but... Let me say this, I'd rather play the Changeling with this in order to go play around with the Changebringers. And fun fact, while you get all the Demonic units, you know what you're not getting? The Mortal units. Oh yes, so let's say we take the Plains of Zambajan right here, right? And we dedicate it to corn. Let's take a look at the recruitment situation. We get cast warriors of 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 corn with halberds, and we get cast warriors of corn with dual weapons. You know what we're missing over here? Yeah, pretty damn bloody obvious. Chosen. That's what we're missing. So we actually end up with the worst army out of all of the cast factions in quite a lot of ways because we're missing some very critical stuff. Chosen. Missing Chosen. You can get Chaos Warriors of Siege again, and you can actually get a lot of uh, the good units of Siege through the same structure, but again, you're missing out on the Chosen. And funnily enough, like, you actually have to unlock the various demonic units, including things like Peng Horrors, if you're playing this particular campaign, so um, enjoy doing that. It's... Like, I have a lot of issues with Siege, but at least Siege can work. It's just not really a fun mechanic. Oh, but you can get all the minor abilities like Plagues and Seduction and all that kind of good stuff. Seduce Units, you can get Seduce Units. You can certainly get Teleport Stance. That's undeniably useful. I'm not going to... 
uh, deny that particular aspect. And Daniel can be dangerous if you're fighting him because of all the regiments right now and teleport stance, which is like bloody and powerful as an ambush stance. But really, the reason this faction doesn't work, beyond the item situation, beyond the research tree, beyond the heroes you actually have, which, yeah, I mean, they're good, but you just get the demonic heroes. And only one of each type, not multiple of each type, which would be pretty great. Still, having four different heroes that you can increase capacity, especially if you defeat Katamarkan and get his defeat trait. You know, fun fact, it's actually a really good strategy, I imagine, in this campaign, because you don't need to kill Boris Ursus. But there's probably a really good strategy in this particular campaign to play a campaign as Epidemius, defeat Daniel a hundred times or ten times, save ten lords with that defeat trait, and then load it up in your own campaign with Nurgle lords um, and <laughs> befriend Boris Ursus. You can come, you can vassalize factions, but of course a lot of the Order factions and in particular Kislev will hate you, so enjoy dealing with that. And also because you're so weak, you will not be able to maintain a lot of armies. Like even maintaining one good army is actually quite expensive. Chaos armies can be in general expensive and you have a pretty terrible economy. Your main economic structure starts at 100 and goes all the way to tier four for 2000 to 400 you can trade and your looting and sacking income is also not that great the problem is is that when you take over settlement sure you can occupy it and dedicate to god and you do want those dedications because yeah you, you may not care about a lot of things here but it is a source of good quote-unquote body parts and units more importantly that you want to acquire unless you just want to play with cast warriors of Nurgle of uh, not Nurgle you don't even get those you get of corn and siege unless you want to play with just that if you want to unlock all the nice lovely units over here and by the way undivided is really good if you want to go for that uh, you're going to need to take settlements and, and dedication to a particular god but the problem is if you sack a settlement well good luck you're not going to get any kind of glory for a particular god so your horrible financial situation actually ends up even being even being worse than it should be i really don't know what creative assembly was really thinking with this particular campaign or any of the demonic campaigns when they designed the for warhammer free at least we've moved on from the you meet demonic faction you get an instant declaration of war against them situation to you're still terrible, but at least you don't have half the freaking world against you from the very start. So that is a quote-unquote improvement, I suppose. Quotation marks. Big quotation marks with, with respect to that. Like, it's just not a campaign that works in any way. And why make this video, you might ask. Well, because anyone who's played Total War knows how horrible Daniel is, but there's still new people coming into Total War who might think, oh, this campaign can't be that bad. No, it is that bad. It's turn 23 in this campaign. Let me just put it like this. By turn 23, I can conquer, I don't know, a quarter of the world in certain campaigns, and not necessarily even the most overpowered one. Many campaigns, if not the vast majority of campaigns, I can win by turn 15. By winning, I mean not necessarily achieving the short campaign victory condition, but getting into a position where you can't lose. Speaking about winning a campaign, those short campaign victory conditions and long campaign victory conditions, they've actually made it worse for Daniel here than many other campaigns. First off, you need 80 settlements as opposed to 75. You need 35 as opposed to 30, which is pretty bad. But on top of that, you actually have to ascend in service to any Chaos Gods, or go undivided, which means you need to get enough glory to get this. Yay, that is freaking fun. That really is freaking fun. Oh boy. Because even if you go full on glory for Icon Divided, which is actually the best one because it gives you a lot of uh, power and you get all the units anyway, and get a Lord and Hero Recruit rank you still are gonna take a long time to get there. Oh, another fun fact about Daniel. His um, public order is tied to undivided chaos, but you can't get undivided chaos provinces. No, you have to dedicate the province or settlements to a particular god. You can mix and match. It's probably the best strategy to like just get, okay, one settlement of province, siege, one Nurgle, one corn, all that. Uh, that is probably the best choice with respect to it. Uh, because if you dedicate to a particular god, well, 
your main settlement buildings, which are actually a huge source of corruption in a lot of campaigns, are going to generate corruption for that particular faction. And you got to dedicate it to one particular god. So you end up with rebellions in your campaign because chaos is designed in that way where the way to prevent rebellions is to indeed uh, rely on chaos corruption, which is really powerful. But you don't have that particular benefit. You can get control building, so it's not too horrible. You do have a control commandment, but still, damn, having to actually put the effort as chaos or a faction with corruption. Vampire counts don't deal with rebellions. Warriors of Chaos don't deal with rebellions. X, Y, and Z don't deal with rebe rebellions because of the corruption element, and that gives you control. Yeah. And it can be a good amount of control if you play your cards right, but damn. Also, it's kind of bad that you do actually start in the Northern Chaos uh, Waste as opposed to, say, Norska, where he does start in... Um, where, where he does start in uh, Realms of Chaos, because in Norska, there is undivided corruption. Though there's also some issue corruption, because thank you, Aziz, all over there. But it would actually work better if you started in Norska, because at least that way you'd have a bunch of corruption, uh, undivided corruption that could work in your favor. Like, it's also the starting position that makes it pretty bad. <laughs> I, I don't know, like... It is a shame, like, I, I, I just, uh, beyond laughing about Daniel, it is actually quite a tragedy to think about this particular campaign. The reason I say that is his campaign, Yuri's campaign, the tutorial campaign, is certainly one of the better campaigns that he has ever put together. And a really awesome experience anyway, regardless of whether or not you're a new player or a veteran player. So the natural thing you'd have, the natural inclination you'd have after playing that particular campaign and I'm sure this applies to many people that started playing Realms of Chaos, is like, okay, I played an awesome tutorial campaign, let me go play the same character that I played in the tutorial. Uh, yeah, <laughs> about that. Don't play this campaign, it's irredeemable. I wish it had been done in a better way, but here's a note. Bellacor should be an undivided demon of chaos as well. It shouldn't just be Daniel but they made them Warriors of Chaos. I suspect that Creative Assembly spent a lot of time and effort and energy in reworking Warriors of Chaos, and they were like, we're not reworking freaking Daniel just to make Bellacor a free character for him. So they decided, for that particular race, so they decided to make Bellacor undivided. It is awesome that they made them available to everyone when they made Immortal Empires available to everyone. It owns Warhammer free. But yeah, if you want to play an Undivided Demon campaign with all those units and regiments of renown and uh, much better race mechanics and vassalization, subjugation, etc., play Bellacor. He genuinely, uh, everything that Daniel should be is what Bellacor actually is as a campaign. And that's perhaps the biggest strategy. Kosin, signing out.